I was born in Marlton, Arkansas, a small town about 50 miles west of Little Rock. I was about to be drafted, and uh, so I decided I'd rather pick out my own service and have the draftmen put me in the Army, so I applied for the B-5 program, which was the Navy program, uh, and became a, a pilot. On February 15, 1944, American forces launched a major air raid on a powerfully defended Japanese air base at Kavieng on the northern tip of New Ireland. Flying a rescue patrol in the area was 27-year-old Nathan Gordon at the controls of a PBY Catalina seaplane. With the battle raging around them, Gordon and his crew had to continually scan the 15-foot swells for signs of American pilots plucked violently from the sky by heavy Japanese anti-aircraft fire. Shortly after we'd gotten together with the Army planes, I had a call from an Army plane somewhere, I don't know where they were, but he said he had a plane down and he'd give me the location of it, which he did. I flew over it and the plane had already sunk, it wasn't there but there was a lot of oil in the water, a lot of dye marker, and there was one large life raft, but I couldn't see anybody in it. So I took off as soon as I found that out. And barely got airborne again until the plane, and I think it was the same plane, says, uh, I have another plane down, I'll lead you to it. So we went into that one, and it was a life raft with three people in it. So we did the same procedure. The only problem being was that uh, I had my power back as low as it would go, but that was enough where it would pull me through the water and they couldn't get the life raft in. So I find out, I said, what's wrong back there? And they said, well, Nathan, you're going to have to cut your engine so we can't pull the boat in. I said, oh, my goodness. You don't like to do that because lots of times they don't start for many reasons. But I did. They got them in and there was three then. Uh, Pretty bummed up, but not just real, real serious. So I took off then, and again, I hardly got airborne again to this same plane and said, I've got another plane down for you. And it was quite a bit closer to the shore. It wasn't more than a mile. And we'd get a lot of feedback from the shore out to where we were. It's difficult to get about of rifle boats onto our plane in rough water, but they got them aboard. And, uh, then we started to take off again. Uh, I started my port engine and it fired real good. And then I tried to start my right engine and I couldn't get it started. And we flew around with it for two or three minutes and still wouldn't start, so I thought the only thing I could do was just to let it rest for a minute. And then I tried again and we got it started. And we took off. And I thought that was all there were there. With this plane taking a heavy pounding, Gordon headed back to base to deliver the wounded. But almost instantly, he received another call reporting a crew stranded a mere 600 yards offshore. With nine rescued airmen aboard and 10 in his crew, he now risked losing all 19 lives in an additional rescue. Of course, the decision was mine. I wasn't going to leave it up to the crew to make a decision what I wasn't going to do. But I just couldn't leave them back there. I just, that's what I wanted to and I knew I had to go back and try. Gordon's approach took him directly over the Japanese batteries at a perilous 300 feet, landing once more in dangerous swells and buffeted by enemy fire. He and his crew rescued six more survivors before finally returning to base. I never heard anything at all about it for several months. I continued to fly patrols, and I didn't think about any war to be frank about it. Because, you know, you're doing something out there every day, something's dangerous and some more dangerous than others. And so. so anyway, it was several months later, and then I, somebody told me that, that I had been recommended for the medal. 
And uh, I just thought, about, well, if we get it, maybe I'll get to go back to Washington, you know, and see the president. <laughs> but it finally it did come out, and we were to go to Melbourne, Australia, which we did, we flew down there. The presentation of the medal, and all my crew received the Silver Star, and I received the Medal of Honor. And uh, we flew back the next day, 700 miles back to where we were. So I thought at least maybe they'd get a little relaxation there, you know. So, but we didn't even get that. Ha, ha, ha.